Well, well, what, what do you want to talk about? Well, in in in, in uh, I could talk about some of my pro the projects that I'm involved in now. Also, some things that. Uh, well, let me let me let's just let's just do something. And then I'll, 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 I'll talk about my relationship between some of the different people that I'm working with in my instruments, because that's really my focus. I was introduced to the bass saxophone of uh, the first time uh, in the early 70s by Howard Johnson. Uh, he was uh, playing with uh, so many of the uh, top rhythm and blues, rock and roll, f from there to rock and roll acts all around New York doing sessions and writing sessions. And uh, I uh, did the Rock of Ages uh, album with uh, Howard and the band. Uh, and um, but during that period, Howard had a bass saxophone at the house, and I got uh, in, in influenced by that really more than anything else is to see somebody with one and get to touch one, and uh, blow it a little bit. Uh, he let me do it. And when I got a chance to get one the next decade, uh, he influenced me quite a bit, Howard Johnson, in so many ways, and this was one of them. At the same time, he even just talked about the E flat contra alto clarinet, and. I really was totally unfamiliar with the instrument and I wound up getting one of those uh, just because Howard told me about it. Uh, my name is J.D. Perrin. Really, I'm John Davis Perrin, Jr. <laughs> and I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. As a young man growing up in the inner city of St. Louis, uh, it was, uh, uh, as I said before, we had this wonderful cadre of teachers. Many of them had migrated from the South in different places, uh, and they were the talented 10th. That group of people that taught me were part of that talented 10th group of African-American educators um, that were very, very special in what they had to go through in mostly uh, traditionally black colleges and universities to get their education and, and the, the rigorous kind of uh, uh, training that they received. O'Hara Spearman was from Tallahassee, Florida and um, had gone to Columbia University and lived in New York for a while and then migrated over to St. Louis and married and started teaching in our public school system and played and performed. So we were very, very fortunate uh, to have O'Hara as, uh, as one of our teachers. But in the YMCA's in the inner city, there was always a place that musicians could come and rehearse, especially if you were with a school teacher. And so we were rehearsing there with the Panhellenic uh, Orchestra and uh, I was, uh, O'Hara walked up to me and I was this little 11 year old boy and says, hey Coleman Hawkins, why are you playing that thing so loud? And of course, I couldn't play the tenor saxophone soft at that time. I mean, it, 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 what, he, what he said to me was not just a joke. <laughs> because uh, a saxophone player, to, uh, it's always a challenge for young saxophone players to uh, play something that you can listen to in the low register. The saxophone is extremely raucous in the low register and hard to get the notes to come out at all when you're a beginner. They, are to break, they want to break up on you they are there. until you learn how to subtone. Uh, you, you can't get them to blend in with anything. So uh, this was a lifetime. Uh, he, he posed a question to me at the very beginning of my uh, career that has been a lifetime issue for me, is being able to play, <laughs> to have dynamic control over the saxophone, particularly in its low register. O'Hara Spearman helped all of the young people, and he continued as we grew up and became teachers and professional musicians. Black Artist Group was a, a group of musicians significantly that I worked with with people like Kemp Hill, Julius Hemp Hill, Oliver Lake, 
Hammett Blewett and others, Malinke, Bob Elliott was uh, one of the leaders and a playwright and actor. Emilio Cruz was there. So people were coming from also out of the country, out of the, out of the city of St. Louis to be part of this. Vincent Terrell, another significant artist that I worked with for years. Floyd LaFleur, of course, Charles Bobo Shaw. So these uh, actors, writers, and dancers came together at the end of the 60s to form this um, black artist group, actually in the spirit of the civil rights movement. My first stint in New York City was uh, the earliest of the, of the 70s for about three years. Um, and I had a, uh, a fellowship from the Danforth Foundation, which by the way is Ralston Purina, um, uh, to uh, study. And I came up here uh, and was enrolled in the so New School for Social Research in, anth in Anthropology and also the Olatonji School where I studied uh, drumming. And, uh, uh, but the main course that I took uh, was Jabbo and I were roommates and we studied with George Coleman for almost two years. Now how this really happened was great because uh, Hammett blew it, uh, when, we, when we came to New York, Hammett uh, had already mentored Jabbo and coming to New York and had him playing in, um, uh, in jobs on baritone saxophone. At that time there were a lot of rehearsal bands but there were jobs uh, in, in Latin music particularly because the Latin uh, uh, bands played dances nonstop even during the week and on the weekends it was all, always work and Blewett uh, survived on some of that kind of work before he got with Mingus and started being out of the country so much. But, Blue, but uh, uh, um, Blewett's prescription for me was to introduce me to the great Howard Johnson because he thought that Howard would uh, introduce me to work and that we would like each other. 